Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, this is TN Artist, also known as Brett Tadlock. I want to thank you for stopping by today. Today we're going to go over some uh, cool stuff here in Rebel 3. And this is uh, how to paint a fantasy horror army, horror army in uh, watercolor using Rebel 3. So what I've done here is I've got a tinted canvas. It is uh, using one of the watercolor papers that I've just uh, decided to go with a brownish kind of color. And I'm laying in some watercolor using the blow tool to blow some of the uh, streaks and stuff here and start laying in a background. So I knew I wanted to do kind of a, a piece, uh, kind of a fantasy piece of a misty forest kind of thing going on. So that's what I'm doing here is uh, playing around with the different look and feel of it. Using the blow tool and changing the um, tilt of the canvas and pausing it and so forth, it really lets you get this kind of ethereal background. And then the other thing I'm doing is using the blending brush to soften any of those really hard edges that you can sometimes get from it. So from there, I moved into doing these trees, laying them down with the ink tool, with the ink pen tool. Uh, have the blending paused, and then I go in with the water tool and kind of roughly outline some branches. And this is to encourage the ink to try and flow into here. Cause what I'm gonna do is, is unpause so that it's going in there and then use the blow tool to blow the ink into those wet areas that I have. And again, it gives you a very organic tree quickly and then take the blend tool and fade it down into the mist that was created from the background. This is on a separate layer, so that way I can really play around with it and not mess up the layer below. And then I wanted to throw in a few other trees here and there as well, just some background uh, noise, if you will, and kind of get what to look for. So I knew I wanted to do this, and then I wanted to eventually have a warrior or some kind of thing in the front. So I just started, decided to start laying that out here. And again, I'm using the ink pen tools to uh, lay it out. I always use the fountain pen setting. I just really like the way that one does. So then I'm kind of just getting the outline, the rough shape and doing that. So this was originally inspired by Jeff Maricola painting that he was doing on the back of a magic card, uh, some goblins and stuff that he did that kind of I always liked what it, he did with that. So I thought, oh, I'll try something similar, and this is just a practice piece. It's not something I'm going to try and sell or anything. So I thought, okay, I want to do that, but I don't want to do the goblins per se. And I was trying to get some ideas for what I did want to do, and I was looking around on Pinterest, and I stumbled across this sculpture, uh, digital sculpture of Odin. And I kind of liked the way it looked, so I wanted to do something very similar to it. So I started laying it in. But I wasn't sure. It was kind of a Odin Thor kind of painting. And I've got the links below uh, if you want to check a look at the two guys that, that I'm referring to here. And you can see their stuff and what all they do with it. The uh, person who did Odin was Ali Jalali. And he uh, did, anyway, he did the Odin stuff there. So I was just really looking for a warrior. Like I said, I didn't really want to copy anybody's stuff here, but I uh, just wanted to practice it and get in a kind of a feel for playing with the shadows. So, so back to what I'm doing here is I'm laying in highlights and shadows and kind of playing around with the look and feel of everything so I can get an idea of uh, how it's all going to lay out. And I've got the blending brush, the ink uh, pen, and the watercolor. But primarily what I'm using here is going to be the ink pen and the blending brush and kind of fading on and pushing back and forth. Oh, and, and the marker tool. I do switch to the marker tool here in a minute because I like the, the softness of it that it gives and kind of gives a nice look. So just pushing and pulling the highlights and the darks here and kind of get the shape that I want and not overly worried about details too much, just trying to use um, uh, some lights and darks to get kind of an, a road map for where I'm going. And then I decided that I wanted to uh, make it a little bit different size. So I'll enlarge it here in a minute. But you know, when you're doing this, this is the part where you want to do be kind of free with what you're doing and get kind of a feel for the overall tone of it. So that's what I was doing here is trying to get a feel for how the, everything's going to lay out and what I'm trying to, to do and what I needed to push for my practice. So um, laying in some armor because I did want to play around with trying to do a metal tone on this as well. So I'm doing that. I am um, wanted to play around some skin tones. Now originally when I started this I thought about just doing it in black and white and then going back over it and making more of a 
like realistic skin tones, uh, you know, I mean painterly, but, but still more of a, like an actual person. But as I developed into it, I really liked the idea of the way it looked. If it was a, like a zombie kind of warrior, uh, like maybe a, a Viking warrior, part of an army or something that's then dead coming back. And it made me think of some old, uh, Dungeons and Dragons stuff I did back in the day. And it's like, oh, this is kind of cool. So I just decided to go with it and play around. But there are several things here I wanted to practice. And this is what I recommend. And this is why I think it's okay to look at what other people have done and use it as inspiration. Because, again, the one that I looked at, the Odin, it was all just uh, monotones. About the color of Sculpey. So it didn't really have any color to it or anything. And But it had kind of the shadows and stuff that I wanted and the look. So that was where I just really started um, using that to see what I, you know, how I wanted to play with it and stuff like that. But again, if you look through history, you'll see that people always looked at other people's artwork to use for learning from. And that's what this is about, is just trying to learn. So, you know, if you wanted to use this piece and just kind of uh, go through and do your own, go for it uh, and practice with it. I mean, ideally, don't sell it, but, you know, practice. So, um, some of the things that are interesting to do is the hair uh, and rebel and her tool here to get that really soft look but um you know pushing the shadows and getting that, that taking it from that really rough and unrefined to kind of softening and blending it in and playing with the shapes as you go and that's really what you want to do is just allow yourself to play around with it again this is sped up about five times from what the original was. So I took about just over an hour to play around with this and get the look that I wanted. And I could easily take it and mess around with it and completely change it from what the other stuff was that inspired it and have a finished piece. But that's not really the point of this. The point is just to try and learn more. So that was what I was doing here. And again, practicing with the, uh, the hair and the patch and everything else. And that's one of the things too that you really want to make sure you do. You know, always sample from the colors as you build them and then work the entire piece. You know, don't get stuck in just one section working just that, especially digital, because digital we can forget to zoom back out and look at it. So you really want to do that and zoom it out. And then that gives you a chance to realize that, oh, I need to change the perspective and the size. And that's another advantage of working on layers. So that's what I did with him was I enlarged him because I liked, I wanted to be more in your face. And then, um, this is where I decided, all right, I want to try and colorize it in, but I'm not sure what color. I do know I want red, kind of a red hair, but you know, how red and whatever. So by overlaying it like this, I start to get the color that I want uh, because I realize I can throw this in here and then add a little bit of brown on it and really get that. So right here, I was thinking about, you know, doing a full painting of making his, um, him look alive and kind of coming in from battle or, or something like that. But then I, um, after I went in and did the highlights here, I did some of the skin and I really liked the way it looked over this paper to get that kind of feel. And to do this right here, so again, I've got it overlaid from below, so I'm keeping the darks from below, but then I can push the darks here more, but I can really get those highlights. Now, if I wanted to play around with the shadows even more, I would make another layer and do a multiply and then paint over that so that it would multiply over it. But really, I think the overlay worked just fine for this. I don't need to really play around with it, especially using the marker and the watercolor tools. But I got the feel. So right here, I started laying in and I was playing around with the color that I wanted to use. And so I was intending to do just this color as a base layer and then do highlights and shadows from it. But after I did this part, and kind of zoomed out and took a look at it, I thought, I didn't really like the looks and I think I want to do this all over and I'll maybe play around and have him be an undead warrior because I hadn't put in his eye yet as, as far as his pupil and stuff, it's, but I kind of liked it. Um, so I thought, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. And so then I just kind of started going around with the marker tool and evening out some of the colors and grabbing some of the different local colors to make it all blend together and match. So, um, that's what I'm doing here is the leather strap that's on him and then darkening some of the shadows and putting some stray hairs. Now having completed this piece and looking at it and thinking about going back, I probably could have made it more gruesome with him being a zombie, but I decided not to. Um, but it could be something to play around with. 
So I was looking to do the highlights and the shadows on the armor, and so I started adding some blues and purples and then pushing the darks there as well to really give it that feeling of metal and grays. And by doing that gray underpainting, it really allowed me to kind of have a good starting point. So just throwing in some highlights. You know, I'm not trying to do chrome, but I do want to make it look um, metallic. So I'm doing here. And then uh, put in his eyes so right about here. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this zombie kind of guy. And I'm going to put some, make him a little more pale and um, dead looking. And so that's what I decided to do. So it really gave me an idea to play around with it. And then just like I said, I like the texture of the paper showing through for Rebel. Rebel does that really well with its, pe with its textures and the, paper, the way the paper interacts. So then I decided, you know, okay, I kind of like this. It looks like a haunted zombie kind of forest kind of thing. Um, and then I was trying to figure out what I was going to do next. And I thought, you know what? He needs an army. He needs an army behind him. So um, I was sitting there trying to figure out where I wanted to put them and how I wanted to lay them out. And did I want to do a whole bunch of Viking warriors and all that kind of stuff? And I thought, no, I'm just going to keep it really loose and soft in the background and just have this really a hint of the army behind him because I don't want him to detract from him I want him to just add to it so and again that was kind of the one that Miracola did with the goblins was he had them in the background as well so that's what I started to do here and with it and again the you know having the layers I can put this layer of the army between him and the background and then um, go in and tweak it so I wanted to be kind of hinted that they were skeletal warriors and zombies but in different states of of decay so some are a little bit more some are a little less but all of them I wanted to be just a hint of what's behind him and what's coming with him that's what I'm doing here and it's real soft real kind of thrown in there and hinted uh, this guy got a little more detail because again I wanted it to be more on some spots and less on the others so that's what I'm doing here is just kind of throwing in the, although I did realize one one thing real quick that I realized was that I was on the wrong layer I was actually on the tree layer and so I was painting over that one and wasn't intending to do so um, but then I right about here I realized it and then I, I switched back to because I wanted to have it in case I needed to soften or uh, erase anything. I didn't want to mess with the trees in the background. And so actually, it's kind of that I realized that after I do this pike, that I realized that I was on the wrong layer, just because I was kind of getting into it and wasn't paying attention to my layers. And I try not to paint on too many layers anyway, but I do like to have them so that way I can really make sure that I get the look of the. Film. So, um, so yeah, right there, that was when I realized it. I was like, oh crap, I'm trying to erase this. And I'm on the wrong one. So let me just kind of blend it all out jump back to the line. There is a uh, straight edge tool. That's what I'm using right here. You do that in Rebel by holding down shift. It's taking me a little bit to get used to it because I'm used to doing it in Art Rage or in Photoshop, but I'm starting to get the hang of it and messing around with it. But then I got the look that I wanted in the background and kind of that feel. So I thought, okay, I need to add a little bit more fog and mist. So I uh, start doing that here in a second after I you know, merge the layers down and then uh, and I also realized I wanted to do some backlighting and I wanted to do some rain because I thought oh, that would be a cool atmosphere, you know, kind of element and add that glowing, spooky kind of look. So I decided to add some rim lighting. And then when I did that, I thought, okay, it'd be cool to add some rain. And so then I just kind of scratched in some real quick raindrops coming down and you know, getting that feel for it. So anyway, but yeah, kind of rounding this out and finishing up with just some small details here and there. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. It's just like I said, it was a practice piece for myself and I wanted to throw it on here and, and let everybody take a look at it and get, you know, kind of some thoughts and feedback on it. Uh, so if there's any questions you have about it, I know these are real quick kind of pieces that I'm throwing in here, but if there's questions you have about how did you do this or why did you do that, then um, leave a comment below. I do my best to get back to the comments you know, fairly quickly, usually within 24 hours at the late at the most. Uh, but a lot of times, honestly, within a couple hours. So, but yeah, so really right about here, it's almost done. Really, the last thing left to do is flatten everything and sign it. So there we go. So I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe and share this with your friends. Come join us on Facebook. All the links are below. And check out my Redbubble site as well. So I, I have stuff for sale there. So I appreciate it. Have a great day.